What's up guys? Hi, how are you? Uh, welcome to Rally Pharma. This is World's Best Doctors channel. I know you guys know that. So um, take a few seconds and just hit the subscribe button. We are continuing with our series of Ask Your Pharmacist and uh, today I have a special guest. Guys, you know how we welcome guests. Let's give her our drum rolls. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, hi, Doc. Uh, please Hello. welcome. Welcome Thank to my you. channel and introduce yourself. Thank you, Dr. Linda Banga, mm -hmm. um, for this amazing, amazing opportunity, and welcome. I'm honored to be here. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy. Like this is something I've been looking forward to, especially with her. And yes, I hope everyone loves it, and we get more subscribers. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell my subscribers your name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm Dr. Asha Maru. I just graduated last year and I'm six months into my internship of MOH apparently. And yes, I'm looking forward to more. No, welcome. <laughs> so uh, today, guys, we're going to talk about uh, things we wish we knew before we actually did pharmacy. And this is a topic that um, it's a bit of controversial, but I know you like it. So without further ado, please tell us your number one point. Yeah. Number one point. If you're doing pharmacy, be ready to dedicate all, all, all means everything of yours mm -hmm. to pharmacy, pharmacy and pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. By the way, pharmacy is really, really hard. And guys, just to take up from what she said, point number two, it will affect your social life. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, your social life will actually go when you're in school because you really need to do like a lot of reading. And I remember like one time uh, back in campus, I had to attend my sister's wedding. But actually, um, my, I had an exam like the next day and my sister was wedding on a Sunday and the a wed sorry, the wedding was on a Sunday and the head farm came exam on Monday. And the wedding was in Mombasa and I'm in Nairobi. Oh no! So you can imagine. And you know, you can't miss such events and you can't also miss to study for exams. So what I did, like I just like flew, went for the wedding and came back. The next morning landed and went into the exam room. So you see, oh my your social life, yeah, your social life will actually be affected. It's true. Yeah, and people might never understand that. Um, I had a social life where the first year of uni, you're having mm -hmm. fun, you're yeah. partying. You're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can do it because mm -hmm. I've done A-levels. Mm -hmm. And then you see a drop in your grade. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I have to compromise something. <laughs> have to compromise. Social yeah. life went from 100 to, to zero. zero. My friends yeah. are out there going to San Mar, they're partying. I have pharmacy exams like yeah. every two weeks. Every two weeks. Exactly. And I'm just like, oh no, but it's worth it at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, point number two, it's like really hard landing a job these days. Oh my god. I'm telling you, like, yeah, you're doing your internship and <laughs> you'll see this after internship. Like as for me, after I finished my internship, I had to sit at home for like um, seven months before I actually yes. It's it's actually very true. So we like, are lucky to get this yes, internship. You're lucky to like after internship, yeah. You paid really well, but then after that, you have to stay home Seriously. for some time before you actually get a job. So for my case, it was seven months. And you know, it's so depressing. You're used to going to work, and then all of a sudden, you have no work. <laughs> you have to start tamaking and who dropping your CVs everywhere, and it's really, really tough. Yeah. Yeah, so what I have learned in this one year is something we need to be feeling honored about because mm -hmm. everyone doesn't get this chance yeah. so but at the same time we have to build a network yeah it's get true. contacts and in it's kenya true. even cvs yes. don't work people yeah. don't even yeah. reply to our cvs yes. anymore yes. it's like oh you worked here this is your reference this is your contact okay yeah. job is done job is done it's true but then you know, i always say your network is your yeah network. so linkedin yeah. is something yeah. i really look upon yeah. to and i'm trying to build whatever yeah. i can yeah the rest man you have to keep working you have to keep working <laughs> it's true because uh from my own like experience even getting this job that i have it was a matter of referral oh, like no. someone just refers so me. you refer to me in the future <laughs> <laughs> yes i will definitely but i want a government job yeah. i feel that's more where we learn mm -hmm. compared to private i'm not saying private mm -hmm. is a bad thing mm -hmm. but I, i'm more like comfortable in a government in job a government especially job. helping patients mm -hmm. and stuff because Clinical. those guys are really in need yeah. i feel yeah. yeah it's true yeah uh, what's your next point my next point is um pharmacy school is not easy yeah in the first one year you'll be like oh it's so easy i'll mm -hmm. get it done mm -hmm. wait till you hit your third year when you yeah. actually start your clinical, clinical studies yes. As 
okay dissection and all is something part of the process but when it comes to the actual aspect the practical aspect where you have organic chemistry now we're implementing that in the mechanism of action and then you're drawing like diagrams in there and you're just like how am i supposed to remember this yeah. but daily practice consistency commitment is what you go through there was a point i almost failed, failed. Yeah. yeah and i and at that point i realized if i really love pharmacy this is my passion yeah. i cannot go here yeah. this yeah. is just yeah. not i stopped everything and yeah. then like day and night <laughs> one thing yes. yeah and i can i can attest to that because i remember my first ever physiology exam <sighs> yeah so uh, this is what happened you know you're from high school and then you assume automatically you're oh, yeah. we know so yeah, you're going to pass and everything So there's the first cut that we ever did for physiology and you know for our school they used to put like a red mark uh, between the people who passed like 50 and the people oh, who no. failed. Yeah so they separate you literally, literally with a red line. That's so heartbreaking. And you know what who was the first person beneath the red line? Dr. Linda. <laughs> This was a wake up call and my new my sister was a lecturer. Oh. Yes. So that the expectations so, are yes, very the expectations are very high. So she saw that and she's like how can you be leading on the failure list and that was a wake up call for me. Yeah, yeah like, you need a wake up call yes, in life. You need a wake I'm, up I'm glad call. everything happened because if it didn't yeah. happen yeah. I think I would be like roaming around Wrong. somewhere It's just true. randomly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um another thing that I wish I knew is uh, there are more career choices in pharmacy. Yes, so than the three uh, choices that you're always given like hospital community and in the now there is something called yeah. primary health care mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah there's some something yeah. called primary uh, but it's at the end that. of the day it's still clinical yeah. but the only thing about primary health care right now I'm at Westlands healthcare mm-hmm. it's more about promotion prevention mm-hmm. while hospitals like level 5 it's more about curative mm-hmm. causes yeah. so mm-hmm. where i am at um there is more about prevention like we have the ccc clinic mm-hmm. basically patients who are hiv positive mm-hmm. So now they come to you and everything. So we are trying to um eradicate the transfer of HIV from their mm-hmm. kids or if their partner is positive. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of prep and prep this mm-hmm. counseling. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of preventive causes because everyone in Kenya cannot afford to get a cure. Yeah, and yeah, you know how Kenya true. is, yeah, they have yeah. a lot of corruption yeah. going on. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. So, um I just wish that we were taught in I school wish. like um the way we were taught in school was actually more um practical than mm. theoretical. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, most of our uh, curriculum in uni is usually more more theoretical than exactly. practical. Exactly. So, I wish that the curriculum can be changed to reflect uh, our practice because let me give an example of myself like Had I known that during my internship that there's something called regulatory Exactly. Affairs, I would have taken it very seriously, yeah, because in the industry you only rotate in sorry to say and like product you're limited to production. production yeah. I know. I like know. you're just seeing the way they're compressing yeah. tablets day in day out. And that is something of okay, yeah. it is a pharmacy's job, not yeah. that, but we're not yeah. actually going to be compressing yeah. it. Yeah, the machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what even I learned when I was at the industrial rotation mm-hmm. for the, the um mm-hmm. what you call the internship. Yeah. Yeah. I actually enjoyed it so much yeah. compared to what we have been learning the, all the yeah, clinical aspects so yeah. in my head i'm like why didn't we expand on expand regulatory that. affairs yeah, pharmacovigilance yeah. quality Every assurance quality assurance i enjoyed it yeah. and now i have to start st- studying that i want to like pursue further on that mm-hmm. but for that now it's like i have to do it separately, separately we were yes. never expanded yeah. we on that in uni that, yeah. so i think we need to be more um diversified in uni especially yeah. in maybe research academia yeah. Yeah. all industrial aspects mm-hmm. also there's something called uh, pharmacy law and advocacy oh, pharmacy law yeah by the way and this i've actually been looking for someone who is practicing pharmacy law and ethics to interview uh, and i'm not getting even we even have advocates mm-hmm. who fight for pharmacy not mm-hmm. exactly pharmacy rights yeah. but um just generally they yeah. go according to laws and regulations mm-hmm. so there's so much yeah, more there's so much i feel we're so yeah. restricted yeah. yeah we are so restricted and hey if you come up with curriculum for the universities and you're watching this it's time to change that i, I know, mean the I old, 
the old ways are gone like let us integrate the theory and the practical and also practice. guys whoever is watching this i'm sure half of probably most of you guys are medics yeah so please start forwarding these videos to your lecturers yeah. or people in yeah. charge of curriculum yeah, so at least they yeah. understand where yeah. we are coming from yeah. because what you learn in uni mm -hmm. is not exactly what you are going to be doing outside yeah, you true. can go in a totally different, different direction field, yeah. another point that i actually feel should be addressed and what i wish i knew earlier was um, in terms of roles and responsibilities between a pharmacist and a pharmaceutical technologist yeah not to put anyone in bad light or something but sometimes we struggle like maybe they've advertised a job opportunity but then they are putting the roles of a pharmaceutical technologist and uh, they want a pharmacist or they put roles of a pharmacist but they hire, they hire technologists technologist. yeah, yeah i true. feel like that should have been addressed even if we look at cap 244 by the way like um the roles and responsibilities are not really like defined yeah but then um i think in kenya the thing mm -hmm. is because of our country it's not that developed yeah. people cannot afford a pharmacist mm -hmm. we are not mm -hmm. going to chill with 60 or 70k mm -hmm. sorry guys if i'm <laughs> hurting you but this is a reality now yeah, it's real so it's obviously diplomas obviously they know they won't be getting paid mm -hmm. as such so mm -hmm. they rather we would be Say we are di um, diplomas, and yeah. at hundred k you will have two pharmacy two diplomas, yeah, and in hundred k yeah. someone wants to just like one, one pharmacist, pharmacist wants that. Yeah, yeah. So obviously there is a lot of business and economical mm -hmm. scarcity. Yeah. Okay. I was even talking to another pharmacist who's practicing in the community pharmacy, and she was telling me like she really wants to employ pharmacist, but now you look at the economies of scale. You look at the economy right now. Like it's really, really. Look really, at the really inflation rates, right? yeah. so and next yeah. month it's very yeah. bad. bad. It's I true. mean, yeah. So they look at that, and then they're like, instead of me yeah. hiring this pharmacist, I just have to hire. And to be honest, there's not much difference yeah. between a tech and us. And someone mm -hmm. like me, who's a pharmacist right in the field, and then there's mm -hmm. a technologist like ten years into the field. Obviously, mm -hmm. he or she knows more than me. No, but really, um, in but, terms of inter yeah. okay, like there's a. Clearly, as you can tell, there's a difference 100 between a pharmacist and a pharmaceutical yes. technologist. Especially you know? with the license. As yeah. a pharmacist, I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, even mm -hmm. if you're a company pharmacist for yeah. an industry, yeah. you have the right to import and export, export goods. Medicine, while for yeah. a technologist, yeah. I don't think it's allowed. Yeah, even when it yeah. comes to the practice, yeah, I exactly. know. You see, um, from my own experience, when working with a fellow pharmacist, it's actually easier and better than working with a pharmaceutical technologist. It's because, no, I'm not lashing out, but I'm just saying, depending on the level. That boundary will come. Yeah, there's usually, you can actually tell there's a difference. Imagine I've noticed. So to pharmacists, this is not like to discourage you, and to pharmaceutical technologists, I am not trying to bash you out. It's just the level of information and the level of exposure. I would yeah, just I suggest I wish PSK, PPB, or yeah. whoever is in charge of yeah. our board, yeah. they try to triangulate a format where yeah. the pharmaceutical technologists mm -hmm. and the pharmacists have their own space roles, yeah. and their own yeah. roles and roles. their own limitations yeah. because we can't be yeah. conflicting every, every day. Other. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we need to work like, we are together all here to with live. each other. Yeah, yeah, like I really need a pharmaceutical technologist mm -hmm. and they also need me. Yeah, yeah? Exactly. We don't have to fight. We don't have to have these wrangles that exactly. we always have. We should work like hand in hand with each other because at the end of the day, yeah, yeah the same thing that you said, if you look at me who is fresh from school, and a pharmaceutical technologist who has like 10 years of experience mm -hmm. in the community pharmacy, you'll see that um, their level of experience is higher. Mm -hmm. So even sometimes, yeah, I know even in my community pharmacy at some point, I was like being taught things by, by a pharmaceutical them, exactly. technologist. Which is fine. Good, and which we is fine. respect you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, my point is, let there be no issues between the two of us. We should come together and work as one exactly. instead of fighting each other yeah, yeah. and we'll just have a separate department or separate law that this is your role this is our role yeah because yeah. it causes so much conflict and i feel now yeah. people are even yeah. scared to do pharmacy yeah, to do pharmacy at the because at the end yeah. of the five years we've given in plus yeah. one year six years, six years we're still yeah. struggling to get the job at the yeah. end of the day yeah and then our pay is not like oh all, yeah, that. all that and then that what's the point <laughs> between <laughs> us and a diploma yeah, yeah. now this, this, no, yeah at, at that point you and we have invested so, so much in school fees yeah. and everything not like yeah. it came from trees yeah. Yeah, <laughs>
Oh my god. Okay, you have another point. Um school life, uni life, pharmacy was uh, hard, very mm-hmm. very hard. Mm-hmm. But of course, don't study alone. Have yeah. groups, have make friends, oh, yeah. so make the right friends. Yeah. Right. I had really good friends who really helped me through my time and I think that really pushed me and find people who motivate you mm-hmm. don't get discouraged and yeah. yeah follow your passion if you feel pharmacy is not your thing yeah. guys drop out man yeah. there's no yeah. there's no time it's limit true. of what yeah. to what to start when yeah. to start yeah. follow your passion don't do something you're not into mm-hmm. because at the end of the day you will not even enjoy it in your workplace and like yeah. us too we love it like mm-hmm. we even enjoy yeah, it, yeah. Enjoying it. because true. this is our passion right yeah. here yeah. but yeah just have courage, you guys yeah, got this. It's, it's true. And at the end of the day, by the way, it depends on your passion, it's as passion. you said. Yeah, you have to have passion because at the end of the day, you might be posted in a hospital where you're supposed to help patients in an industry where you're supposed to do everything. So yeah, passion and these is, roles are all very different. Like yeah, in a clinical are, setting, you have very different experiences. Yeah, Just the other day, yeah. I saw a delivery. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> oh I saw a kid popping out, <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Imagine, yeah. I'm just like, wait, a human actually came mm-hmm. out because that's bizarre yeah. but then yeah. when it comes to an industry it's mm-hmm. a totally different, different. setting yeah. it's documentation and it's yeah. very monotonous yeah. mm-hmm. so pharmacy is not based on one thing you have yeah. to be ready to accept every stage yeah. you go through or whatever you want yeah. so you need to know by the time I think you need to just find yourself explore yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the day when it comes to career choices just go through different types of careers by the way I'm doing a series of that for your own benefit Go through them and discover what it is that you really want to do and follow yeah, that Yeah, like path. if you want to open a community yeah. pharmacy, she did an yeah. amazing video on yeah. it with yeah. um, Dr. Uh, Mona Lisa. Yeah. So yeah. I actually went through it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so helpful yeah. because yeah. so many people out there, yeah. even someone like me, mm-hmm. we don't have that much yeah. knowledge, knowledge on certain yeah. things. It's so true. please go follow and subscribe like Thank now, now. Now, now, now. <laughs> so guys, those are just our two cents on things we wish we knew. Mm-hmm. If there's any other thing that you wish you knew, just let me know in the comment section and we'll be able to discuss. So, Doc, thank you so much for thank coming. You too. And guys, please watch, share, subscribe, learn and share. And at the end of the day, guys, I really thank you for being up. We'll be posting audience. up on our social media site. So if yes. you guys miss out on YouTube, yeah. you can always go back to yeah. to our social media. Yeah. So I'll link her social media and mine on the screen. Then you can yeah. follow. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.